Yom Kippur is the holiest day of the year for the Jewish people. This is the time of year when most Jews show up for services, or at least more than usual. In big cities, you sometimes even need tickets. The place gets pretty crowded. To prepare, during the days before the holiday, people make amends and ask forgiveness from their family and friends, and then the day arrives. We learn, on this day you are to afflict your soul, and Yom Kippur makes atonement for you and all Jewish people. So, how do you afflict your soul? Famously, by fasting from food and drink. There are other prohibitions too. No bathing, perfume, sex, or wearing leather. It's a lot of stuff you can't do. Fasting and praying, though, are not enough, as Yom Kippur demands that Jews also commit to changing their behavior. As it says in the Haftorah reading from the prophet Isaiah, an empty fast is not sufficient. This is the fast I desire, to share your bread with the hungry, to take care of the poor, to clothe the naked, and to not ignore our fellows. Traditionally, you spend the entire evening and next day at prayer services. There's many ways that people actually do this holiday. Some people create their own rituals, taking a contemplative walk, or fasting at home. Yom Kippur begins with a service just before sunset called Kol Nidre. You'll notice it's the one time a year where people wear a prayer shawl or talit at night, and many are dressed in white. Kol Nidre is a public apology in advance for failing to meet our own vows and admitting we're not perfect. The chanting of this stirring melody is the beginning of a marathon that ends 25 hours later. The evening, morning, and afternoon services that follow each contain special passages. Importantly, people chant confessions, called vidui, silently as well as out loud. Readers chant from Leviticus about the scapegoat ceremony that atoned for people's misdeeds, as well as the book of Jonah, about the prophet who ran away from God and eventually changed his ways. There's a memorial service called Yisker. Yom Kippur is a time for relationship maintenance, requiring Jews to seek out reconciliation with others, with themselves, and with God. The imagery of the holiday is of gates, the gates of prayer, of soul-searching, and of forgiveness, which are closed at the final service, Ne'ilah, or locking of the gates. There's another metaphor, being written in the Book of Life on Rosh Hashanah and now being sealed in the very same book on Yom Kippur. You might hear people say, Gemar Chatimatova, may you be sealed for a good new year. As Ne'ilah concludes, the shofar is sounded in a dramatic closing ceremony. With the final blast, the ups and downs of a really long day come to a full stop. Ah, it's chow time. Time to eat as Jews gather together for break the fast, not breakfast because it's at night. Like any good cleanse, Yom Kippur leaves you feeling wrung out like a sponge, having gone along a spiritual journey, refreshed and renewed, ready to begin again with a clean slate. Gmar Chatimatova.